Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna. Today I'm going to be doing a video using makeup products for something other than their originally intended purposes. So I've taken a whole bunch of face products, eye products, and some lip products, and I'm using them in ways that they just really weren't originally intended to be used. So I'm using lip products on my eyebrows, I'm using face products on my eyes, I'm using eye products on my face, and just creating a really unique look. So if you want to see how I got this look, just stick around. All right, so it can be pretty hard to uh, use a foundation or concealer, or like find another product to use as foundation and concealer. So I usually use concealer under my eyes and on any spots. So instead, I'm going to use a foundation stick today for those purposes. And this is just the hourglass stick that um, was in a giveaway that my mom and I won. I'm just going to dot that on first and then I'll put that under my eyes and also use it um, on my eyelids since I usually use concealer on my eyelids. My skin's been a little bit worse lately. Some of what I have on my face right now is actually just dried up acne scarring. And because I really, I like my face to look natural, I don't like my face to look like I'm wearing a lot of makeup and I don't like to wear a lot of concealer and foundation, I do actually like to go in with like a really tiny brush and go over spots since they're kind of spread out quite a bit. If there's a lot kind of grouped together, then I'll take a sponge or whatever and go right on top. But since a lot of them are pretty far apart, I find this is a nice way to not have to apply a lot of product. And that way my skin gets to breathe and my skin still looks like skin. So under my eyes, I'm just putting that on my ring finger and I'm going to tap that in. Kind of the same thing you'd do if you were taking a, a potted cream concealer. Unless you have a brush that you really like, but I don't like using brushes under my eyes. Because my eyes are a bit on the, my under eyes are a bit on the dry side, always have been. So using a brush under there can make things look a lot worse. Instead of using a translucent powder, I'm actually going to take an eyeshadow that's translucent on my skin tone. I often do this to set my concealer on my eyelids. Because I've put a cream product, it's a little bit more emollient on my eyelids. I want to make sure that's really, really set. Because there's going to be a higher chance of creasing with that. And I'm going to really make sure before applying any powder under the eyes that any creases are tapped out. So I've combed through my eyebrows and lately what I've been doing because I have pink hair at the moment, um, sometimes I do use my regular brow product, which is brown, but a lot of times what I've been doing is using either a lip product or a really bright eyeshadow. And when I use a lip product, what I've been doing is using a lip liner. There are some colorful pomades out there. I actually have no experience in using brow pomades. I know a lot of people like them, but I've actually never used one. And so there are so many colorful lip products out there and a lot of them are at the drugstore, whereas a lot of colorful pomades, you have to go high-end for those. So I figure, why not just use what you can find nearby and at a cheaper price? I already had this lip liner available. This is a Wet n Wild lip liner. This is the gel lip liner, and it's in the shade Pink Electro. And you want to make sure that you draw on fairly lightly at first with a lip liner. It might be a bit more pigmented than what you're used to. But it's okay if you end up going 
a little too a little too heavy-handed obviously it can just be wiped off you might notice some staining at the end of the day again that'll disappear that's okay i'm gonna do once i've gotten the base shape is then i take a spoolie and drag the color through because it can be a little bit more spotty when you're using a gel lip liner such as this so this kind of helps push the color through a little bit more and also I don't want to draw it straight on at the very front of the brow so this will help push it up through there too You notice I made a little bit of a mistake there, but it wipes away pretty easily. But in general, that's what the eyebrows look like after using lip liner in them. If you do want a little bit, bit less mess and a little bit more control, then the eyeshadow is probably better for you. But it does depend on how much pigment you have in your eyebrows and how much pigment is in the eyeshadow. Um, as, just to see how how well it's going to show up a lip product might work better for you if you have really dark thick eyebrows um so it just kind of depends which way you want to go so i've zoomed in just a touch we're going to get started on the eyes and for eyes i'm going to use mainly cheek products so like blush highlighter if you know that you're sensitive to certain pigments, you might want to check first to make sure that blush is going to be okay for you to use on your eye, on your eyeballs. But um, generally speaking, it's okay for me to use blush products on my on my eyes. I haven't had any issues, but it just varies from person to person. Um, for example, if you if you notice that you've had trouble using eye pigments which have more pigment in them then maybe you might have trouble using blush because there is more pigment in blush. So I'm going to take this pressed blush from Pure Anata Cosmetics. It's called Dahlia. That's what it's called. <laughs> Had a little bit of a brain fog moment there. And this this blush is very pigmented. Uh, it's kind of like a cool toned mauve so it'll work really nicely as a crease shade. And again, like pressed pigments for eye colors, blushes might stain your eyes a little bit. If you don't want that, then don't use blush on your eyes. It doesn't bother me a bit, but it bothers some people. Well, then I'm going to use this uh, Hard Candy Girl Next Door Marbleized Baked Blush. It doesn't, it doesn't have a shade on it. But it's, it's just a shimmery pink, which to me, um, it's, it's not really great for blush. It's better for like a blush topper or a, a highlighter because it doesn't have a whole lot of base pigment to it. It's, it's basically just shimmer. Actually, I might see what that looks like wet. A lot of baked products do end up needing to be wet in order to have a more significant effect. That's why a lot of people don't like baked eyeshadows. So to have a baked blush is also kind of strange to me because you're not really going to want to wet a blush brush and then apply your blush. Again, it's all about preferences though. That's just me. I wouldn't want to wet a blush brush and then apply my blush. And then that's that's really shimmery for a blush, just in my opinion. But it looks nice as a shimmer eyeshadow. And then I'm going to take this Hourglass Mood Exposure blush on the lower lash line. This is pretty similar to the blush that I put in my crease. It's just a little bit, got a little bit more shimmer to it. Well, not even shimmer, just, it's just a little bit more glowy. 
And to finish the eyes, I'm going to take this Milk Makeup Holographic Stick in Supernova. I'm going to put that on my pinky finger. It's a cream stick that has like a blue purple finish. And I'm going to put that on my brow bone and inner corner. Make sure when you're using a cream product on the inner corner that you don't drag your finger, you just press it on. Otherwise you might remove any face products you have underneath, such as your concealer and powder. Don't really have a replacement for mascara. So I'm going to use a Bare Minerals Lash Domination Mascara, but I am going to add something on top. But first, I'm going to add a coat of that. You want to make sure that the mascara is dry first before we do anything else with it. So I'm going to carry on with the rest of the face first. This Juvia's Place palette has shades in it that work really well for the face. So I'm going to take this shade up here called Creme and use that as a blush. And this is just a matte salmon pink shade that'll go really well with the eyes today. Going for a very pink theme. Nice mascara smudge. This is why we like mascara to dry first before we do anything, otherwise stuff like that happens. And I want to be very glowy today, so I'm also going to use the shade Tarte, which is like a violet pink duochrome, and put that on as a highlighter and blush topper. So kind of just swirling it all around the same brush. So what I'm going to add to my mascara, if you have an extra mascara wand around that's clean, that would be great. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of white concealer. If you have white eyeliner, that would probably work too. I'm going to put that on the back of my hand and just roll the, the wand in that. And just start putting that on over top. It's just going to give your eyes like an icicle effect for winter. I've done this once before and it turned out really, really cool. For lips, I had a lip balm on. I've blotted the majority of it off. And what you're going to do is you're going to take an eyeshadow. And uh, if you want to use a clean brush, you can do that. I'm going to take a clean finger, go into an eyeshadow palette. This is the Colored Rain Very Cute palette in the shade Logberry, which is like a matte plum. And I'm going to put that on my lips. Again, there's just a little bit of slick there, so that's going to help it stay. And this is a full face using products for reasons other than they were originally designed. Hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know when it will be up, so happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. If you celebrate, uh, happy new year, potentially. <laughs> Hope you're all staying safe and well. Please don't have large gatherings to keep everybody safe. And I hope to see you soon. Bye, everyone.